Hey, I'm Frederik, and today we're going to look at uh, dependency injection, inversion of control, and how to uh, include a container into our framework. So uh, we have a lot of things to do, so I guess it's best to get started. So, dependency injection. First things first. Uh, we discussed it in the previous episode, uh, what the framework uh, is going to include and how we're going to include it, but I think it's pretty important that we also go over the basics of what it is and how we should implement it itself and obviously the, the benefits of using it. So uh, dependency injection is actually pretty easy. The idea here is that we don't uh, new up new objects, but that we, as the name suggests, inject them. So how do we do this? Uh, here we have two classes in one file. Don't do that, this is just an example. So here we have uh, a user class and a user controller. In the user controller, we want to get all the users. Now, without the dependency injection, you might go a little bit like this. So you create a new user, you new up the user class, and then from that user class, you would return um, user and then get users. Now, um, this would work, obviously this would work, but it's not the real uh, greatest way to do this. If you wanted to test your user controller class, it's really hard to mock or replace that new user with uh, oh, uh, an easy testable way. Uh, also, if you want to switch out that user class for something else, it's also not that easy because you need to go to all of your codes, uh, change up the user with the new class you would uh, want to use. So uh, what would be a better way? What is dependency injection? The controller uh, in the public uh, function construct, here it would um, inject it itself. So here it would just inject the user, the user, we um, do the typical uh, uh, constructor initialization. And here from this user, we would just go to the same class user and uh, everything would still work. So here, nothing changed in our, in our user class, but in our controller, we uh, injected the user class through uh, dependency injection. And we just use it like that instead of newing it up. It's really that easy. That's everything dependency injection is all about. When I first heard about it, I thought it was like extremely complex and uh, really hard to, to wrap my mind about till I actually started using it and started actually trying what it's all about. And it's really that easy. It's, there's nothing fancy about it. So the, the big benefits here, as we quickly discussed before, is obviously the decoupling. So your user class and your user constructor don't uh, directly know each other and um, it's easy to switch out and easy to test but about that decoupling and that easy to switch out there's a little bit more to it so if we jump back into code for a second here um, what would be even easier to do is if this it would not be like a user class but for example a database class if I can type that and then um, connect or something and in our user controller, we would use that database, database, yeah, just quickly, database, and then here from the database, data, sorry, this is taking a bit, and here the connect. Now, what's cool here, is we no longer have a user, we're now talking about databases. So what if I wanted to switch out my database connection? It would be kind of easy if we were to implement uh, an interface. So if this implements interface uh, connect to database, I know that that interface doesn't exist at the moment, sorry. Uh, that doesn't, interface doesn't connect at the moment, but what if we weren't injecting the database class, but were to check upon the connects to database class. And nothing would change here. And what if we had a way to like 
instead of inject classes, inject the, interf the, the classes that uh, interact with that interface. And that's where uh, inversion of control comes in. Uh, the, the idea that you're, you're uh, detaching your classes, decoupling your classes directly from, from itself, but to uh, reference them through an interface. This might sound a bit complicated and something you really need to get in a bit. And uh, this is where uh, dependency injection libraries really come in handy. Uh, for example, uh, the one we're going to look at is PHPDI, which has a nice uh, way to configure your, 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 uh, your links and your mapping to each other. So it has this configura configuration file where you can just link interfaces directly to classes. And then you can do things like this, where you can just talk about an interface and it would grab that uh, class connected to that interface, which you set up yourself in, in the file, and just returns the class. The big, uh, the big upside here is that you're not uh, coupling your code directly, and you can swap it out easily just in one file. So if uh, I wanted to uh, switch out my database class with another database uh, layer, maybe if I'm switching from uh, PostgreSQL to MySQL or from uh, Mongo to something else, um, I would just have to change it up in one file and my entire application should, again should, uh, work very easily and out of the box and, and very uh, beneficial to everyone, obviously. So that's, that's a big advantage of, of, of uh, working like this. Uh, so yeah, you can also reuse a lot of things and, and, and switch them out into each other. So uh, probably a good time to now look at how to include this in our, in our framework itself. So we left off here. This was uh, the, the framework we had at the moment. Not much of a framework at the moment. So we had a public map. In that public map, we had our index. We just echoed something. Here, um, I'm just going to quickly uh, reconnect to, to the server itself. So we go to the public map, see public, which is the same map as before. And then um, PHP, capital S, localhost, and then a port which is open. I thought I used something like that before. So if you go to there. Oh yeah, did the other one. Okay, so everything is still working and everything is still great. Now, uh, what we want to do, I said it before, is, is first of all, we want to add auto loading. So we had a composer included in our uh, previous session. And now we're just going to uh, route it here. Very easy. Uh, the thing Composer does is that it uh, does, a, does away with, with uh, includes and uses uh, namespacing and, and uses. But <laughs> the funny thing about it is once you actually want to use it, you still have to require it. So we're just going to require once uh, the current directory we're in. Um, and then we go two layers up. Oh, sorry. I still need to add the dash because we're at the current directory. We go two layers up, so we're in the root map. Then we go into the vendor map. And then in that vendor map, you can see there is an auto load file. And that's the one we need. So, our ED auto completed. And now Composer is loaded. So now we can uh, no longer, we don't no longer have to use uh, requires and stuff. So Ideally, that would, this should be the only require you have in your entire project. Get our first real um, yeah, package included in the, our project. I'm just going to open a new tab in my uh, terminal. Go to my code, um, NFP, I thought it was called, yeah, NFP. And then here we are. Here we can just use Composer and you have a nice overview with nice ASCII art. And we're go just going to uh, Composer require PHP DI slash PHP DI. Now, uh, I'm, I'm using PHP DI for this. I don't have tremendous amounts of experience with it. I'm more of a, a Symfony Laravel kind of guy. But uh, I think it's really nice and it's, it's really some kind of bit of a new kit on the block and I always wanted to use it, so let's use it for this project, right? 
So uh, as you see, as you can see, uh, the project is installed at the moment. Uh, everything looks great. Here you can see we generated the outload files. These are those files we uh, linked right here. This is the auto loader. Here you can see a lot of new files have uh, been added, but don't really uh, mind that one. And now it's just as easy to set up a container as this. So here, oh, uh, <laughs> now we're actually going to new up something because yeah, we don't have the container at the moment. So we need a container builder, which creates, yeah, well, the container. This is what we need. Um, so here, and now we're going to see that auto loading in action. We're just going to import the class and here we use the use and we no longer require stuff. So here there's the auto loading working. Uh, this is the container builder, which yeah, as it's... Uh, now all we have to do is take our container, which is the container builder and we build it. So we now have a container. Um, a container like this isn't really useful. We, <laughs> we just have an empty container. We don't want that, obviously. So we want to add our definitions. I uh, talked uh, earlier about the map we were using. So we're going to create a map where we can uh, link classes to setups and classes to interfaces and stuff. So let's create that map. It's as easy as this. So we take the container builder, we add definitions. Uh, PHPDI uses definitions as their mapping name, so okay. Uh, they require a file, so actually a file. So we need to do a little bit more of the dear stuff. So again, we're going to do it like this. Um, add the string. Oh. Uh, add the string. We're going again, one uh, file up. And here we're going to create a config.php. We don't have that in the moment, so we're going to create that. New uh, PHP class, let's call it config. And here we have our config file. All it really needs is to return an array. So let's do that. Return the array. And how does it work? For example, if I wanted to do it like I, I, I showed before, so if you wanted to do that, that database stuff, we can uh, very easily, for example, create uh, a database. So if you just wanted the database, we could just link it to a new uh, database. I obviously don't have a database at the moment, but we could do it like this. So every time you get your from your container uh, a database, it would just automatically take that one, just use it like that. Or you can actually link, uh, for example, um, database interface, interface, um, and link it to uh, a class or even an anonymous function. So, function, sorry. And here you can, for obviously, um, do a lot of logic. Uh, this is very easy if you want to uh, uh, set up a database with, with a lot of settings, for example. So here we link the uh, database interface to uh, a new database, for example, which could take your username and passwords and, uh, I don't know, port or something. Uh, which is very easy because every time you then inject your uh, database interface, your entire database has already been built. And if it's not been built before, then it just creates it uh, right now. So yeah, it's as easy as that. I'm just going to delete, delete this at a second. I'm just going to rerun it. Everything still works. Uh, great. I know this, um, this looks a bit uh, pointless at the moment because we don't actually have anything in our interface. Uh, but don't really mind that. So uh, the next uh, lesson we're going to probably look at the request and response and dive a little bit deeper into that. And then we're going to use the, uh, the, uh, the container obviously very, very extensively and uh, maybe add ro routing and stuff. It's going to be pretty great. So uh, that's it for this lesson. 
If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or post it below or something or, or contact me in any other way. I'm more than happy to help. Um, yeah, I still don't have an ending to these things, so yeah, do whatever. And uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 o